if you look at their schedule, they still have opportunities to get some big wins. They play the Wildcats at home. Uh, they play Florida again, and I think they also play South Carolina. So there That's are right. still some big games where they can maybe move up into the uh, the brackets. You mentioned South Carolina. Keep in mind the Gamecocks did not even participate in that event. That's easily one of the best teams in the league this year. Off the turnover, Weatherspoon in the front court. The story for Mississippi State has been Lamar Peters already seven points for the Bulldogs. Weatherspoon eyes the shot clock. Lazy pass intended for Mario Kegler. Shot clock down to eight and talking with Ben Howland. He was trying to remember how many times they've had the shot clock within five, and he said, not very many. He said that's one of the things, patience and execution. They just don't make the defense play for the full 30 seconds. O'Neill checks into the game. For Ole Miss, he had 13 points in the game against Baylor as Ole Miss defending the three there. Stapleton trying to hit one off the bench. Xavion Stapleton. A three on the other end. Oh, yes. Silky smooth jump shot by Rasheed Brooks. And Ben Howland will not be happy with that defensive possession by his team. They worked through that time and time again in practice this morning and gave up the wide open three. Again, a young team, though, it's learning how to understand the scouting court and then carry it over into the game situation. We will see what Mississippi moving to a 2-3 zone out of that man-to-man. Burnett on steel. Burnett all the way off the window and in. What changing defense does to this Mississippi State team, because they're so young, they're still trying to understand what defense they're playing against. Now Ole Miss goes to a 1-3-1 half-court trap. So if you don't have great leadership at that point guard spot, your, your other four teammates are just going to be standing around, not really sure what you're trying to do offensively. Weatherspoon finds an easy path to the basket. That's one way to dissect it. That's the best way. Go to score the ball. <laughs> Five-point game. Weatherspoon now with four. And the Rebels have won the last five here in Oxford as Brooks takes it strong and Rasheed Brooks will go to the free throw line. Tomorrow we'll have another solid college hoops doubleheader for you starting at 7 Eastern time with Alabama taking on Arkansas. Then we'll take you to Baton Rouge for the battle between Frank Martin's number 19th ranked Gamecocks and the LSU Tigers at the Maravich Center. Both games right here on the SEC Network. Rasheed Brooks at the line shooting over 92%, 13 out of 14 on the season. Hadn't taken a lot of attempts, but very efficient when he gets there. Both these teams trying to snap a little bit of a skid. The Rebels have dropped. Two in a row. Mississippi State has lost three out of four. And we talked about turning the page, getting into February. And as you know, Kyle is a former pl player. February can be a really tough month with players. The, the legs start getting heavy. You hit a wall, particularly younger teams. It'd be nice for either one of these teams to get a little momentum going into that month. Well, the old saying, you know, you don't win championships in December and January, but February, March is when they're won. So you want to try to get everything going in the right direction. Play your best basketball by the end of February and the start of March for conference tournament and then the NCAA tournament. So trying to get all the fine points tuned and ready to go. Saiz working a high post, kick out to Neal on a three. Back iron, Saiz battling for the rebound as he always did. Sometimes it looks like there's three of them out there. Almost a backcourt by Peters. To Carter, Weatherspoon, pump fake, pull up, deep two, too strong. Saiz, who else cradles the rebound? I've got him for at least five boards. Well, that's one thing, Saiz. Not only a defensive rebounding, but offensive times. He'll even block out teammates or his opponent on the offensive end. Weatherspoon ahead of the pack on the slam. Somebody got lost in the defense roll this. Ball goes up or even on a turnover. Somebody's got to be back. Always should have one guard back when the ball and shot goes up. Sometimes coaches leave put two players back if they're playing against a team that fast breaks a lot. This is Furman Amish's very aggressive player and draws the blocking foul. And that'll take us to time for those games. No question. Well, Kyle, I feel honored tonight. I'm, I'm sandwiched in between a 
a great scorer for the Kentucky Wildcats and a, an Oscar winner, really. Hal Macy and Morgan Freeman go together <laughs> like peanut butter and jelly. Nice take on that play. Now he has worked a few films with the uh, Kentucky native, Ashley Judd, and uh, quite a few films ago. That's right. Kegler on a three. Got it. A silencer by Mario Kegler, the 6'7 freshman out of Jackson, Mississippi. Real good ball movement that time inside out against that zone, giving Kegler the wide open look. The only team that shoots the three ball better than the Bulldogs is Vanderbilt. Saiz. That's just like taking candy away from a baby on that block. Holman just gave him too good a position down on the block. All he do is catch and go straight up. You got to try to fight him out on the floor. Don't let him get that low. Now Mississippi comes with the one through one again, trying to get some traps out in the corners. Saiz in search of his 24th career double-double. So now the ball goes to the baseline. They switch into a 2-3 zone. Two up top and three down the baseline. Peters spots and fires a three. And Ole Miss clears it. And that's one of the empty possessions we talked about. You can get that shot any time in the shot clock. Why not wait and try to work him in the basket? If Brooks knocks down the jumper from the left side. And a timeout call by Ben Howell. He's already burned two of them. Game, you can kind of wear your opponent down and control the pace of the game by just being patient in the offensive end. I think when you watch Mississippi State and Ben Howland, again, it's the second youngest team in the country. So those timeouts are not just for this game. These are all teaching moments that young men need to learn. That's almost another turnover. Probably should have been called. Instead, it's a slam, a thunderous one of that by Eric Holman, the 6'10 sophomore. And that's the thing that's kind of exciting for Mississippi State fans because it's, at times they look terrible, but other times also flashes of, man, they could be really good. They're definitely not lacking athleticism, and here's some of it right here. Peters racing all the way to the basket. He left it short. Rebounded by the Bulldogs. And a jump ball as Eli Wright had it blocked from behind. Mississippi State with the good ball movement. Peters this time behind the back and tries to finish. Kind of gets caught in the air, moves it to the wrong hand and misses. But his teammate doing a good job hustling down the court. And Hyman right behind just using that long arm to get that jump ball. Holman. Does that one rattle in? He almost missed the bunny. Eric Holman. Back-to-back -back baskets for the Bulldogs. And in the corner, another open three. A good box out there by Harard. State going big. They've got two 6'10 players on the floor right now. Weatherspoon stops and kicks it back out to Peters. Ball screen, Peters probes, Peters all the way to the cup. Look at that move by Lamar Peters. One of the best young talents in the league as far as penetrating, getting to the backboard, creating some opportunities, whether he takes it all the way and scores as he did that time, or all of a sudden now the defense is going to start sucking in to try to stop that penetration, and he'll get it to his teammates. Oh, oh my goodness, Terrence Davis, what has that been? You talk about going strong to the glass. A little hook dunk. Goodness, at 6'4", he just hammers that home. Weatherspoon, yes, on a three. Weatherspoon reminds me so much of a player that played at Mississippi State years ago, back about the time I was playing, which was a long time ago. <laughs> but uh, Jeff Malone was just coming on as I was graduating out of Kentucky. Smooth, silk, never gets in a hurry, just knows exactly what he's trying to get on the floor and then finishes it. Malone went on a great NBA career as Ivan gets another bucket in the paint. Too many points in the paint right now for Ben Howland and company. They've got to tighten that well, up. We talked about their poor defense, and that's one thing. They allow too many drives and, and finishes all the way at the basket. Got to pack it in, make them beat you from outside. And you see that one through one trap in the game. Peter, scissor dribble. Finds an open man on the wing. That's Kegler on a three. Mississippi State, again, 37% from downtown. They are not bashful. <laughs> no, they're not. But when you're shooting like that, it's a good shot. Get that extra point anytime you can. The Bulldogs have pulled it within one point. Under eight minutes to go, first half. Step back three, air ball. Here comes Weatherspoon. And off 
Defensive foul called on Harrard, who was trying to get some position down low. Oh, we see that sophomore and Ole Miss stretches the lead down to eight. He's <laughs> Andy Kennedy kind of fired up, trying to get his team going. And yet giving it a slap pat on the rear himself. I got you, coach. Baseline jumper sticks to the rim. Neal on the run out. And the Rebels, I was going to say sets it up, but they don't do that often. Everything's pretty quick. Now Ole Miss, you've got this lineup. Where are you going to get your points from? There's a good answer right there. We see Brooks moves it over to the left hand. They've gone to a smaller lineup and probably space out the on a 11 to 2 run. See if the Bulldogs have an answer after another Ben Howland timeout. He's burned three of them already in the first half. Can't take them home with you. Might as well use them. <laughs> well, you can't get them back either. Wait in the second <laughs> half if it's a close game. Weatherspoon. Probing. Missed it. Follow is no good. Oh boy, Mario Pedro would love to have that one back. Brooks on a three. Brooks is feeling it now. Rasheed Brooks from downtown. He's got 13. Good to see him back out there having success. You know, he had that episode with the seizure earlier in the season. Didn't really know what caused it. They did all kind of checks. Every check imaginable on him, and they said he's good to go. Never had any history of it. I was actually here for that ball game against Tennessee. A scary moment. Great to see him back out there on the floor and playing well, I might add. You know, and the other thing, too, you like to see, because he was one of the players that was last one to leave on shooting shoot around and then also first one out tonight, getting those extra shots up. Sounds like a, a young Kyle Macy with that work ethic. Another unforced turnover. It's been the Bulldogs that have been sloppy with the basketball tonight. Rashid Brooks in transition. It's a nice feed from his teammates and lets it fly. 6'5 senior from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Kept him in the hospital for a couple days, just precautionary. And as you mentioned, did all the tests to make sure he was able to go without any further concern of any type of medical conditions popping up. Saiz in traffic, wanted the foul, did not get the whistle. Peters, bullet pass ahead. Harrard lost it out of bounds. It will be Bulldog basketball. Harrard's got a chance to be a really good player in time, but he's still learning the game. He is, and, and having that mask maybe uh, hurts his vision sometimes. There you see Colin Neal just reaching in, deflecting. He's got to be strong with that basketball. Go up and finish at the rim. A guy his size, I mean, she almost squeezed the air out of the ball. 6'10, 250. Kegler draws the foul. That's only the third team foul on Ole Miss. Right. Oh, I threw it right, right cross court in the paint with three gray jerseys. And there's Burnett. A nice drive. To give Ole Miss its largest lead of the night, 15 points. And that's one of those possessions for Mississippi State, just allow an easy drive to basket. No resistance at all. You've got to play every possession on the defensive end. They've shown they can do it. I mean, they were down big to Kentucky, but able to cut that game, made it a, a two-possession game at one point. But you just got to do it, sustain it for the full 40 minutes. Harard on the other end, left alone for the slam. Under two minutes remaining in half number one. Neal circles up top. Finds Saiz on a three. You know, he made that shot. I'm not a real fan of that shot for him. He showed that he could make it, although percentages don't reflect that he's very good at it. But one thing from a senior, trying to extend his game for the Pro Scouts, just to show he can shoot those threes. But that's not his turn. Harrard falls on the basketball, a jump ball. More suffocating defense by the Rebs. He, he got his full work in the rhythm, stepping right into it, but he, he shoots like 29% behind the three-point line. 
if you get that wide open look, okay, take it. But 29% of your strength, man, is in the low post. Ole Miss right now is getting points from everybody. A 48-point first half. We still got over a minute to go. Season high is 50 for the Rebels. They're well on their way to eclipsing that mark. And, and that's been one of the problems with Ole Miss. Actually, both these teams, just that consistency factor. Some halves they play really good, and other halves they struggle to score. I had a game earlier that they had 18 at halftime. Saiz just got whistled for an offensive foul. Now, Sebastian Saiz, one of the reasons he's so good is because he is so physical, but every now and then he's going to draw some whistles. Yeah, you've got to be smart to play like that. A minute seven to go in the first half. Really don't need to pick up that foul. And got caught. That new ruling trying to uh, reach behind and, and hold the defensive player behind you. Gotta move those feet. Keep those hands up. Open three from the corner. Stapleton with an air ball. Rebels off and running. Burnett left alone for three. Nobody came out to guard him. Just didn't communicate Mississippi State again showing that inexperience everybody should be pointing and talking when the ball comes in transition The foul on the other end Stapleton will go to the line Xavion Stapleton, a 6'6 sophomore out of Florida, Mississippi. And had some knee problems, has uh, two knee injuries actually, so fighting his way back for the very athletic player. There's a lot of toughness in this Bulldog team when he's healthy. One thing Mississippi State has, if you go back during that time frame where they were really struggling, after Coach Stansbury left, and even the last year of his time in Starkville, the I call it the AQ, the athletic quotient, really took a dip. But they have got some really good-looking athletes. They're just really young, and at times a bit careless. But you can see why the future looks bright for the Bulldogs. Yeah, they show those flashes, and it's, yeah. it's, it really looks bright. But now just developing that consistency, playing every possession. Both offensively and defensively. They finally went into a buzzsaw here tonight in this first half. The Rebels trying to close it in fine fashion. Burnett can't get the call. Tip up, no good. And that's how the half will come to a close. A record setting half for Ole Miss. The most points they've scored in the half all year. And they end it on a 22. And Lamar Peters. Uh, next year, that could comprise of one of the top backcourts in this league. But the, the pieces are there. It's just a matter of everybody kind of getting on the same page, understanding how hard you have to work in preparation every game, how hard you have to work in the offseason physically to get ready for the, the physical play in the SEC, and then the mental aspect. Every night, show, or every day showing up for practice, getting ready to prepare for that game, and then every game bringing your A game. Because it's new to a lot of these players. I mean, they were the stars probably in their high school team, but they hadn't really played against the competition top to bottom that they're seeing every night they take the floor. Davis left it short. A bit later on tonight, Tennessee and Auburn. Volunteers playing some really good basketball right about now. A win in the SEC Big 12 Challenge, and of course before that, the win against the Kentucky Wildcats. Saiz, that's offensive all the way. Nice job by Harard to absorb the contact. Third foul on Sebastian Saiz. And that's when he gets in trouble sometimes offensively. He kind of gets out of control. His weight shifts a little bit, so he doesn't have his good balance. And he, he makes those errors by losing that balance and getting, committing that offensive foul. You get lower, get that center, center of gravity underneath, so you keep that balance and go either way. I thought maybe he was going to spin there, but he went straight through. It was an easy call. Peters wants a ball screen, gets one. Look at that. Oh, a nice block, though. Good recovery there by Furman Abishis. 
Three ball on the way, short. And the rebound of the Bulldogs. 15 point cushion at some point, the Bulldogs gotta start slicing into this lead. Stapleton in the trees. Funky English on the shot, off the window and in. Well, and Brandon Kennedy getting ready to call a timeout because he's not happy. His team, instead of staying even or allowing Mississippi State to cut in this lead, they should be extending it out to 20, 25 instead of now, all of a sudden, it's a 13 point game. Tight games down the stretch, get a little more experience under your belt, having another year under your head coach. Ole Miss basketball under 16 to play. The lead's been cut to 13. Burnett finds Herman Abishas to Brooks. Shot clock at seven. Burnett takes it strong. No. Follow. And a foul called. Hyman will go to the free throw line. Coming up, we'll speak to the SEC commissioner. Third best team in the standings right now did not play. And that means we had some teams step up. Uh, we got to the end of the day. We won five games pretty quickly and, and couldn't pull through in the last two, but had two great efforts against uh, Baylor here by Ole Miss and the Kentucky-Kansas game. I was in Lexington for that one and been in Tennessee earlier. was uh, just a great atmosphere. When you talk about this, this league as a whole, one thing, as a guy like myself that's, that's been calling games in, in different venues over the years, it's amazing just in the last four or five years how much the facilities have improved. Auburn, this arena that we're in now, what they've done in Gainesville, Florida. I mean, it's never been better, so that's obviously got to be a great step for the league. And we have some folks with plans for the future to make upgrades uh, to their arenas. And, and don't forget, you don't see on TV the practice facilities that have been built around here. Right? Uh, all of that, in addition to coaches, we have Andy and Ben. Ben's new. Andy's been around the block a few times with us and has built a program. Each of those uh, are pieces to building this conference to uh, the position where it's been before and where it belongs again. Are you pretty pleased overall as far as, I know there was a push this offseason for scheduling, trying to increase the non-conference uh, power ratings, I guess you would say, to prepare teams to try to get more teams into the NCAA tournament. Are well, you pretty pleased with that? Yeah, we've made progress, and, and we'll make a little bit of a nudge again to expect an even uh, more intentional or, or loftier effort, if you will. Uh, if you look at Florida, they played uh, the second best schedule. I think uh, last time I checked the RPI, and were rated uh, in the top ten as a result, and they've had success. And then on the other side, look at Tennessee, which is a young team growing. Uh, they go to North Carolina and lose by two. I saw them play Gonzaga, where the first five minutes they just struggled, but they cut that to a three-point game with about four minutes to go against what is now the number one team in the country. And then you've seen what they do. What they've done the last few weeks. That's growth in young players. Then taking that within the conference, is there been any discussion? I start to hear a few things every now and then as I travel around the league as far as scheduling within the conference, trying to make it a little bit maybe more balanced. Not to go back to divisions or anything, but has there been any discussion, maybe a flex schedule? I know is the word that I hear some. Yeah, well, there's, uh, if, you, if you say the word scheduling, discussion will follow <laughs> either shortly before or after. So is there discussion? Sure. Uh, we looked at flex scheduling a few years ago, but that is a very difficult concept to place teams. We want our fans to, to know uh, when our games are going to be played and who they're going to be playing against. And I don't think you have to gimmick up the schedule to access the NCAA tournament. If you go back to December, we lost an incredibly number of close games this year. Now, that's progress because we didn't lose them close last year. Uh, if we turn those close losses into wins, now you have a very different narrative. And we've got five teams in the top 50. Hopefully a few of those will, will push through to the selection committee uh, on selection day, be placing them in the NCAA tournament. Commissioner Greg Sankey is joining us here in Oxford. The perception of the league. We all know the perception in football. It's considered the best. Perception in baseball, women's basketball, considered the best. In basketball, it's taken a little bit of a hit nationally. When, when you talk to athletic directors, coaches, what do they recommend in terms of changing that perception? Well, I think we've done some of that. In, you, know, you talked about buildings. We've talked about the building blocks, the practice facilities. You know, I watch a guy that I've seen coach Final Fours in front of us, and then uh, you have to have continuity and build programs. Uh, and, and you just go down the list of the last few years. Rick Barnes is in the league. Uh, Avery Johnson is now in this conference. Uh, Mike White in Florida is now in this conference. Frank Martin has built the program. Andy, Mark Fox, John Calipari. Uh, adding Bryce Drew is fascinating to watch what they did to, to Iowa State. And they beat a, I saw him beat a good Chattanooga team in person. 
Uh, and, and, you know, I could go through, you know, Mike Anderson and what he's done over time. And I've known Billy Kennedy for decades and, and what he achieved in that team last year. All of that's part of promoting the league. We have a network. Uh, every one of our games is accessible to any fan who wants to watch, no matter where they are in this country. Um, it's a matter of now uh, winning, right. quite frankly. Uh, we need to show up in March and make the kind of progress in March that we've seen before when you know, it's only been what four years We had half of the final four. So it's not as if we've we've left the map uh, The last four years we've had or, yeah, the last four years. We've had three three four and three teams in the NCAA tournament We need to see progress and then I think in, in two or three years. We'll start to see seven or eight teams compete with them. That's how you promote your conference. Mississippi State back on the free throw line as Herrera tries to cut into a 15 point deficit uh, this dominating that first half. Is it really as simple sometimes, Commissioner, as how many teams get in the tournament, how those teams do? I mean, ultimately, that's what a lot of people remember at the end of the year in the offseason. Yeah, there's, there's more to any sport than just what happens at the end of the year, but uh, that's what people remember, and that's how you're judged. You know, we're, we're judged in football bowl wins and losses. Sure. And, and we're judged in NCAA tournament selections and then how you progress. But I think you also have to take a look back and, and look a little bit more deeply. So I saw Tennessee and Mississippi State play a week and a half ago. There are nine freshmen and sophomores on that floor to start that game. Now, when you're going to play in the NCAA tournament against juniors and seniors, that's a different challenge. What we need is to see those young people progress, uh, remain in the league. Our, our coaches are clearly uh, recruiting quality players because we've seen some performances that speak to that. And now we see, need to see those things mature. And, and that's all part of it. But at the end of the day, people are going to ask how many teams you get in the NCAA tournament and how far did each of those teams go. Well, let me ask you this. Just when you get together with coaches, what do you prepare yourself like? What's the hot topic you know you're going to get asked? That first question from the majority of the coaches. Well, you know, last year it, it was almost a, okay, you've been commissioner for a year. What have you done for me lately? <laughs> um, because if you go back to Destin the previous year when we met with our coaches, I was not yet the commissioner. And uh, I was ready for that coaches meeting because that was the one group I thought they're going to be happy with me. You know, I brought Mike Trangisi in, Mike, the former Big East commissioner. And he, at this time last year, became a constant conversation point for me. Uh, and then I really took a deep dive into men's basketball this year. We need to continue to improve. This is a, a solid crew out here tonight. We need to develop officials again. And, and, and I'm not going to run away from that. And so we made a change. A guy named Mark Whitehead, who, you know, if you know anything about college basketball, it's a guy that's worked Final Four. A wonderful person. Great teacher. We added a, a, a video staff member, which, you know, that's not going to be great TV for you. But that's part of instructional information that's shared with our coaches. And then... We had a staff change internally, so someplace behind me is a guy named Dan Leibovitz, who's now our associate commissioner for men's basketball. Dan brings a coaching background to our office, which we had. You know, he's grown up in college basketball, played at Penn, coached for John Chaney in the Temple, was uh, on the Charlotte NBA staff as an assistant coach uh, a few years ago, and a couple other stops. So he can have a couple conversations with coaches that I just can't have, and, and that was a piece of our discussion back a year ago. And I'm not Big rejection here by Iman of Ole Miss off his pogo stick. And that kind of game thus far for Mississippi State. I I'd be remiss if I didn't mention another sport that's on the horizon, Commissioner, as Weatherspoon knocks down the triple, and, and that is baseball. And once again, the polls are out, and there is the SEC prominent in the top 10, the top 25. Looks like another great year for baseball. I, I want to just note how you wove in the halftime entertainment pogo <laughs> sticks into that block. That was That's like, a skill. just Thank remarkable. You. I appreciate that. that. that you got to work at that. Um, yeah, in, in the baseball circumstance in, and our men's basketball circumstance is a signal of the high expectations for this league. And uh, we've missed that national championship trophy for a couple of years. We have teams in Omaha. It'll be another great baseball season. The weather's going to be nice. Softball's the same way, right? You know, Auburn got to that third game in, in the softball national championship last year in dramatic fashion. And uh, it'd be nice to have some warm weather. It'd be nice to be outside for both baseball and softball. And, of course, uh, Florida and softball a couple of years ago with back-to-back -back national titles. So that sport has had... Uh, a great amount of success. I mean, there's so many different sports out there that have enjoyed a run. Do you ever have trouble just trying to balance all the different sports, all the different responsibilities that you have? Uh, 
I, I think probably the honest answer is yes, but I'm supposed to say no. I've got it all <laughs> under control. You know, Marcus Spears at the Peach Bowl said, yeah, you get through next week in that championship game and life will settle down. I said, Marcus, you realize we started conference basketball play two <laughs> nights ago. So, you know, it doesn't stop. And actually, spring's an even busier time for us because we'll have like 14, 15 different struggles. They don't quit. I mean, not under, Co not under Coach Ben Hallen. They are not going to give in. They're going to keep fighting hard to the very end. No, that's a guarantee. They're, they're going to play the full 40, give their best effort out there because, you know, being a young team, they're going to be around for a few more years. You're trying to show your coach and earn more playing time out there on the floor. But um, on the other end, that's one reason I'm sure Andy Kennedy was a little upset during the one timeout because his team had a 15 up to, you like said, 19-point lead. They should have gone ahead and made it 25 and pretty much shut the door, but instead... Mississippi State now has it back down to 11. Meanwhile, every time the Bulldogs start getting it closer and closer, a turnover. That's 13 for the ball game, and now a foul. And Brian Tyree draws contact. And that's those empty possessions we talked about at the start of the game. Mississippi State, a big possession. You have a chance to cut it into single digits, and you don't even get a shot. And already seven fouls now on the Bulldogs, so the Rebels will have the benefit of the bonus for the final 11.45 of the game. Weatherspoon <laughs> took an extra step. And that bounce to Ole Miss. Weatherspoon's tough enough to guard if you give him two, <laughs> Kyle. If you give him three, he's nearly unstoppable. And I think one of the reasons the distance got lost there at the end was because he was kind of waiting on that whistle. He knew he'd taken that extra step. Weatherspoon goes to the bench. Maybe a little banged up on that last play. 255th meeting between Ole Miss and Mississippi State. Began back in 1914 on the hardwood. And another turnover as the Rebels give it right back. <laughs> One thing did, they did such a good job that first half, only four turnovers, and now you see getting a little bit careless. You've got to keep that intensity up for the full 40. That 1-3-1 one, one, sliding back to 2-3 when the ball goes baseline. Kegler runs right into Saiz who lost his goggles. No whistle and now here come the Rebels. Look out. Davis on another slam. And he set that up with just a little bit of a head fake. The defense went running by and allowed him to take it all the way to the rim. It was a heads up play by Ben Howland. He immediately saw Kegler limping, ran to the official and said, Forrest hurt, Forrest hurt. And he gets the extra stoppage in time to get Kegler out of there. It's a veteran move by a veteran coach. <laughs> Didn't have to waste another one of those timeouts. Meanwhile, that last field goal for Ole Miss was the first one in 7 minutes and 29 seconds. So they've left the door open. Deflected pass. Shot clock at 10. Deep three. I don't think Lamar Peters called it, but he'll take the bank three. <laughs> 16 for the freshman. Still counts. 10 point game. And you know, going back down the court, kind of acting like he planned on doing that. Right. Kind of fist pumping. Oh, of course. Yeah. Rebel's been a little bit out of sync on offense. Davis to Saiz, fall in love with that three, an air ball, but there is Furman Amishis to clean it up. And that's his game, just a hustle plays in around the basket, gets a lot of the loose balls, the 50-50 balls. But again, I do not like that three-pointer by Saiz, unless he's just wide open. Right. Kicks high off the back iron. Davis on a three on two. And count the basket. Plus the foul for DeAndre Burnett. And a simple play by Terrence Davis set that up. You don't have to make the fancy pass. Just get the job done. You see Terrence Davis right in the middle. Easy bounce pass. And Burnett draws the foul and able to finish. Almost doing a real good job running lanes. They're the three on one, three on two. Now 
was on Carter. And Burnett was nearly automatic at the free throw line, 88% on the year. Started out the season, made his first 25. More than anyone in college basketball to start the year. We've got some great free throw, free throw shooters in this league this year. You think of Macon over there at Arkansas, Hannah's at Arkansas. And of course, if you like the underhand style, you've got Cameron Berry at Florida. <laughs> Whatever works, right? Yep. Foul on Brooks. And every time Mississippi State makes a run, you feel like this is going to get interesting. Ole Miss comes back and puts it up to 15. If you, obviously, you can't trade baskets right now if you're Ben Allen and company. Ole Miss going back to the zone. Peters scanning. Probing. And, uh, he lost it and he's hurt. Yeah, he's hurt. Pulls up lame, grabbing that lower back. He tried to stop on a dive and in the process immediately pulled up lame. And he grabbed that right side. Peters, who's been terrific tonight, 16 points. Immediately going to escort him to the bench. And you, you hate to guess, but as a former player, the way he's kind of just limp on that left side, almost looks like he got a hip pointer where he got knee maybe in the hip. Definitely in some pain there. Brooks draws the foul. Rashid Brooks back to the free throw line. R. Peters right now just agonizing in pain. There you see, like, there's been some contact on that, that right hip. And, and when you when that happens, I've had it happen before, just the nerve, it just shoots your whole body, all of a sudden your legs just kind of goes numb. Free throw up and down. Let's take another look and see. Uh, watch the penetration up top. And look at that right hip. Yeah, I don't know. But it's, it's, you know, you don't want to guess. I, I, I'm just going to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing we can confirm is he's in a lot of pain. And obviously out of the game right now. It's bad news for Mississippi State. Three on the way. Too strong from Kegler. Rebound fought for and scooped up by the Rebels. I will say this. The one time I got hit on the hip, I had to stand up the entire night back at the hotel when I was in the NBA. Three ball. Good for Terrence Davis. What a night for the sophomore. Sixteen for Davis. Weatherspoon can't respond. Size tough rebound in traffic. Size cleans it up. He has a knack for being at the right spot at the right time. A 12-0 run for the Rebels. Largest lead now for Ole Miss. It's 22, and Ben Howen has to stop the bleeding. Terrence Davis, the sophomore on offense. That's been the story. Without some of the bright spots by Lamar Peters, who, of course, is now on the bench with an injury. Mississippi State... When they haven't had a bucket, they've looked out of sorts, they've turned it over, they've taken bad shots, and that's the difference. And I think you have to give some of that credit to Ole Miss, the way they do continually change their defense. It kind of keeps you off balance as an offensive player. Foul on Terrence Davis. Uh, 16 fouls now on Ole Miss, third foul on Davis. 7.38 to play. Ole Miss trying to improve to 4-5 and five in conference play. Andy Kennedy knew this was one that his team had to have. If they have any aspirations of going to the postseason. Almost another unforced turnover there by the Bulldogs. Here's a perfect example right now. The offense has had the ball almost 20 seconds, and everybody just kind of standing and looking at each other. Right. 
You've got to get on the same page, know what you're in offensively, and execute every time down the floor. And again, the inexperience, not really having that point guard that's willing to get into someone's face or yell at his teammates and say, this is the offense, get there. But that will come. It's one thing. They have the ability. It's just a matter of kind of figuring out what their role is and accepting that role and then doing it every time. You can hear Ben Howland maybe here. <laughs> yeah. Move, don't stand. The easiest player to guard in basketball is one to stand still. You've got to constantly be moving. Carter on a crossover. He's normally instant offense. Pretty move, just couldn't get it to go. Father Greg Carter, coach of Starkville High, and former player himself for Mississippi State. Tyree finds a wide open Brooks. Again, diagonal cross court and a block foul on the other end. 